In the 20th century, engineers were tasked with improving the accuracy and timeliness of air traffic control data. Out of this effort emerged a new standard for secondary surveillance radar called Mode Select or simply Mode S. Mode S differed from other standards of the time in that it identifies aircraft based on a unique identifier assigned by the ICAO or ICAO. In this video, we are continuing our installation theme for December by installing an application that can process MODES messages and the automatic dependent surveillance broadcast system that uses it. Welcome to Unboxing Tomorrow, a channel for electronics, robotics, and communication systems. To get started with this system, I'm going to use a software-defined radio receiver, also called an SDR. The chipset, which is RTL-SDR, has low cost and high popularity. There are many versions available, but for this build, it could use extra precision. So I'm using what I like to call accurized SDRs that are more frequency stable than the basic type that you see here. That frequency is 1090 megahertz, and the software application is called Dump 1090. You're also going to need an antenna that's suitable for receiving 1 gigahertz. And for good measure, I'm also throwing in a bandpass filter to avoid false images like the type that was caused by a strong FM transmitter in a previous video. The computing platform is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus running the Raspberry Pi operating system. Debian and Ubuntu Linux are also very similar. Before you build, check the radio laws in your location. Policies on receiving aircraft data and voice do change with time, so be sure to check before replicating anything you see here. Secondly, I'd like to thank TorGuard VPN for helping make our videos possible. TorGuard is the VPN service that I use, and you can learn more about how to protect your online data and privacy when you use the affiliate link in the description. Use the following promo code when signing up and the Unboxing Tomorrow channel receives a small commission to help make future videos like this one. To get started, you'll need to boot up the system and first make sure that you already have the RTL SDR application. This is something we did in a previous video, so be sure to check that one if you don't have it already. You will know you're ready for this video when you can plug in the RTL SDR receiver, type RTL underscore test in the terminal, and not receive an error. If that's the case, go ahead and update everything with a sudo apt-get update followed by a apt-get install. Give it a moment, and when it's complete, make sure you're at the home directory by typing in cd space tilde. The Dump1090 application has a GitHub repository originally developed by Antirez, which was later forked by Malcolm Robb. I'm going to be installing that version, so in the next step, type in git clone followed by the address of the GitHub repository. It's a quick installation, and when it's done, change over to the new Dump1090 directory by typing in cd dump1090. Once you're there, simply type in make, give that a few moments, and then try to run the application by typing in dot slash dump1090 space dash dash interactive. Give the application a few seconds to scan, and depending on air traffic in your region, you should begin to see transponders one by one. Now, this part was recorded after 1 a.m. on a Saturday, no less, so there wasn't anything in range. This, however, was recorded on a Monday, around the time people get off work. Going from left to right, we first have the 24-bit ICAO address printed in hexadecimal. With rare exception, this value stays with the vehicle for the life of the vehicle, and can include airplanes, helicopters, ultralights, and even things like gliders and research balloons. The mode usually indicates mode S in this version of Dump 1090. SQWK is the octal encoded squawk code, which is programmed into the transponder as a sequence of octal digits. For commercial flights, the flight number will correspond to the flight number you would find on a travel itinerary or boarding pass, but it can also indicate the tail number of the vehicle. As a professional courtesy, I'm leaving the ICAO address, the SWAT code, and the flight numbers out of today's presentation. Beyond this, we have altitude, speed, heading, with 0 being north, and 90 being east, latitude, longitude, signal strength, with larger values being stronger, total messages received, and finally a watchdog timer 
that will remove vehicles that have been unseen for 60 seconds. And don't worry, this is adjustable. If you don't need this human readable format, you can run by simply typing dump 1090 to see altitude in meters instead of feet, and speed in kilometers per hour rather than knots, you can use the metric option. If you have multiple RTL SDR receivers connected at the same time, you can address them individually using the device index. Just be sure it actually exists or you will receive an error. The fix option will attempt to fix single bit errors if it can do so. Keep in mind these planes may be hundreds of kilometers away and we will get errors. Aggressive mode will try to process more messages and more severe errors at the cost of more CPU time. For good measure, you can try running fix and aggressive at the same time. And when I did it, the CPU utilization for the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus was only about 5%. Quiet mode will suppress generated text. Interactive RTL 1090 will generate the table in an alternate format. PPM, or parts per million, will let you compensate for any frequency drift in your receiver. Phase Enhance will attempt to resolve errors in the process of demodulation. And finally, what I assume most people are here for, we have Net Mode. Run the application in Net Mode and use the web browser to access http colon slash slash localhost colon 8080. Keeping in mind that localhost means we're accessing the same computer that we're on. When it loads, you will see a graphical map along with icons representing every ADS-B transponder that the system could locate. The system won't distinguish between airplanes and helicopters. However, you can use the flight data and the hyperlinks on the right to query the internet for more details. Under the MODES model, airport equipment on the ground will interrogate transponders in the air at 1030 megahertz. The interrogation reply happens at 1090 megahertz which is what we're seeing on the display. Transponders can also reply without being interrogated once every second in a unsolicited manner. These transmissions are called squitter and the standard for extended squitter is 1090 ES. As a result, just about every vehicle on your display will be updated about once per second unless it's out of range or there is an obstruction. The location of the antenna is key and a radio receiver can only be as good as its antenna. Other machines on your local network can also view this display while you're running in net mode. All you have to do is get the Raspberry Pi's assigned IP address by typing ifconfig and then searching for the inet value. When you find it, open your web browser and type in the IP address followed by colon followed by 8080. Finally, if you'd like to receive airband voice, you can use the application RTL-FM using variations on the following command. The exact command will take quite a bit of adjusting and a different antenna. This antenna is a half-wave dipole with two vertical elements adjusted down to 6.4 centimeters. It's something I found online. However, the original Dump 1090 creator was able to do the same using basic materials. Not only is the application easy to use, but it deals well with weak signals. Error detection is fairly robust with only a few glitches appearing, which are usually removed by the 60 second time limit. The details of the communications are outside the scope of this short video. However, the two downlink formats most relevant today are DF11 and DF17. If you found this useful, be sure to like and share the video. And while I was going to save this information for January 1st, 2021, I am going to be launching a custom drone side project. More info on it later. However, the objective will be to try and engineer this one from the component level. Stay posted for more updates in electronics, robotics, communication systems, and hopefully a drone or two. And as always, have a great day.